Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So I came across this quote, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago, by a guy named Jim Rohn. Uh, he's a motivational speaker and like kind of a life coach guy, and he made this claim. He said that we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. That, you know, we, had, we adopt the percep perceptions, the perspective, the worldview, the attitude. We adopt the kind of lifestyle of the five people we tend to spend the most time with. And I looked at my own life and I thought, oh my gosh, that, I, that completely resonates, right? Like, so, little story. I grew up in a family, was raised in a family where um, working out, exercising, just taking care of yourself was kind of a given, right? So on any given day of the week, whether it be weekday or weekend, the question was never, hey, are you gonna go work out today? The question was, what are you going to do for your workout today? And that was the mentality, that was the, the attitude of basically all my family members and it was instilled in us by my mom and my dad. And so, it was really, it became really easy to say, no, that's just a part of a healthy life is we get outside and run and bike and ski and do something outside. Now, later on in life, college, seminary, whatever, um, not everyone has that mentality. And I found myself spending a lot of time with people who their idea of working out would be, you know, to run to the door when the pizza box came, which is also a nice thing to do. It's a nice little jog. Um, or like drinking the beer and sitting on the couch and watching TV or, or playing video games. And, and I found myself becoming less and less inclined to working out and more and more inclined to, yep, I'll have another slice of pizza or yeah, I'll just kind of relax and, and, and um, not exercise. And I realized in myself like, yes, that's, that's right. I'm becoming in a certain sense, the average of the five people that I'm spending the most time with. Now, I don't, I don't think this is like a scientifically verified. I just think this is kind of a, one of those observations that a guy like Jim Rohn and myself would make and say, it's, it seems true now, but I've talked to people who have said like two things, like either um, I don't like that or they'll say, but what if, what if you don't have a choice, right? So like I, I have talked to people who were like, I don't like that idea. I don't like the idea that you'd have to, you know, exclude yourself or that you'd have to um, uh, not spend time with certain people because they're not good for you. Now, here's what I'd say. I'd say no one's saying you can't spend time with certain kinds of people, but we are saying you have to choose wisely, right? But I've found so many people in the last couple of years in my experience have this what I call a misplaced loyalty. So it's like just because you know we went to high school together or just because we were on the same floor together in college or because we had the same major or because we happen to have like you know kids in the same grade or whatever that is, we have this then misplaced loyalty that I I have to be friends with you, I have to spend time with you now because we used to back then. That that seems false, especially if you realize that this relationship is not good for me, it's not good for, not good for the people around me. Because our first loyalty, of course, is first to God. And then our second loyalty, in many ways, is to ourselves. I mean, that, that might sound weird to say that, but, but we have a responsibility to God for the kind of people that we become. But again, the second objection is, but um, what if you don't have a, have a choice? What if the people you spend the most time with are people at work or better yet or worse yet, I'm not sure, your family, people you're related to. You don't have a decision. You don't have a choice. Well, I would say in that case, there's two things to keep in mind. One is boundaries. We're going to do a video on that later on, but like you can still establish boundaries with people that you work with or even you can establish boundaries with family members and say, no, I mean, just because we happen to be related to each other doesn't mean all bets are off. Doesn't mean you have complete access to my heart, my mind, and my life. I can establish some boundaries and some clear boundaries. Secondly, if I recognize that the people I spend a lot of time with um, are people who complain a lot or they have a negative attitude towards life, or they have like a victim mentality, or there's a lot of gossip, or there's a lot of whatever that kind of negativity. Not only can there be boundaries, but secondly, I recognize that, okay, I'm gonna have to make some decisions. And one of those decisions is, I'm going to swim against the grain. I'm gonna go against the tide of the people that I'm surrounded by. Doesn't mean I don't love them, but it does mean I'm making a decision that I will not be unduly influenced, or not maybe, let me say this, I will not be unconsciously influenced. Because, yep, I have an obligation to these people. I must spend time with them. It's a good thing. I'm honoring that commitment. But at the same time, I recognize that unless I make a decision to take a stand, to go against the grain, to go against the tide, that I will become the average of those five people I spend the most time with. Does that mean, again, we can't have friends who um, need help? No, of course not. Does that mean we can't be close to people who um, do tend to gossip or do tend to have you know, difficulty in life? Of course not. But I would take a, a page out of like any of the saints, but let's look at Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Saint Teresa of Calcutta. The people she spent the most time with were one, Jesus, 
two to three hours a day in adoration. Secondly, her sisters, her religious sisters. Now, to spend that much time with Jesus is to be lifted up, right? Spending that much time with Jesus and surrounding herself by other sisters who are pursuing Christ was what gave Mother Teresa the power and the ability, the strength to reach out to those people that she served, the people who were forgotten, the people who were hard to love. And I just, I love, one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament is obviously, the, well not obviously, but, but I talk about it a lot, the story of David. He's heroic as a young man, that he is courageous, that he is fearless, that he has the Lord and he's dedicated to the Lord, but he'll go after um, the fight, you know? When David meets Jonathan, it says in scripture in 1 Samuel, it was that they immediately basically loved each other. Now, people, you know, modern people say, oh gosh, bromance. Like, no, no, no. What did they love? Well, David saw something in Jonathan that he loved in himself. And Jonathan saw something in David that he wanted to be as well. Because earlier in that story, there's a story of Jonathan, how Jonathan like was also courageous, was also brave, was also one of those kind of people who would say, something needs to be done, I'm gonna go do it. Just like David was when Goliath was challenging the, the Israelite army. Something needs to be done, I'll go do it. And they saw on the other, like, that's the kind of person I want to be, that's the kind of person I want to hang around. I think it might be a truth, or at least close to a truth, that we become roughly the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So, who are you choosing to spend the time with? You only have one life. We have a loyalty and a responsibility to God first, to ourselves, to become the kind of people God wants second, and then if we are that kind of person, we can reach out to others third. For all of us here at Decision Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless you and your five friends. Wink? I don't think I should wink. That seems weird. If I have wink plus the finger guns, that's different, but not like, hey there. No, that doesn't work. How about this? That's better, right? Is it better? Probably not better. It's probably weird. It's probably weird.